This meeting being live streamed, yes. We accept. So I have to go and then check if it's happening. This meeting being live streamed, yes. Seems to be working. It scared me last time with the delay there, but now I know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on out there? Uh, just sending. Deb, you want to turn on your uh, video? Glenda, you want to turn on your video? Mm -hmm. We assume we want that you want to see us. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are Hi. you? Welcome, welcome. Yeah, I was just setting up the last of the technical things to get all the streams streaming. Mm -hmm. okay. You can hear us, Pam. I see your thumbs yep. up. Yeah, okay, good. I had my iPad click uh, connected to my ear earphones. That's right. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, those earbuds that grab whatever's around. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, Deborah. Can't hear you. Deborah, you're muted. I can see the little mute sign on your face. So there's. Somewhere, if you tap yourself, there's a way to, uh, should be on the bottom right to turn your microphone on. No, that's bottom left, excuse me. There we go. <laughs> Got it. Oh, dyslexic. <laughs> oh, look at that studio. <laughs> so, hi, everyone. Hi. Hello. <laughs> hi. Nice to put a face to the oh, paintings. <laughs> yeah, some, I'm terrible at recognizing the names, but I'll recognize the paintings when you put them up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I have to move mine over. It's always fun to see a little bit of some people of people's studios. Well, I don't really have a studio per se. But... Yes, so I'll, her living room is fine. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> mine is the dining room of the apartment. The living, room, the living room's got all the computers in it, and uh, one of the bedrooms is full of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> mine, is, mine is what used to be a Murphy bed. The Murphy bed broke, so I created shelves in the slot. That's Perfect. it. Perfect, yes. Yeah, that's great. That's great. You know, uh, Uma one one year did it in the laundry room. Oh no, wrong side. <laughs> Maybe I'm... you're muted, Uma. What's going on there? She says that's fine. I'm muted. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I'm, I don't know how many people are logged in. I only see so many at a time. So uh, the general idea is we'll we'll let you introduce yourself and where you're from and uh, tell us a bit about your uh, your project this year, like what you're if you had a project around your pieces or just what your favorite pieces were, if they were just one at a time. And we'll go through everybody, we got a list of names. And uh, if each of us takes like five minutes and then some back and forth from us, we can give you guys some comments if you want about the piece or if you don't, that's fine, no, no problems. And uh, at, you know, around five minutes, no hard line, uh, that should be plenty for us. Uh, Uma, do we have everybody uh, in or? We have only seven people who who come in, but they're still okay. trickling in. I'm letting them in. Okay, so we'll take our time getting started. Well, you can if it's only seven people, we can have a lot more time. Okay. Your first person has just logged in, so the way we do it is we do it in a batch process. Uh, Mark critiques or uh, talks to five people, and then I and we go back and forth. Um, and Damien Lee is the first one, actually. 
Yes, Damien, are you out there? Let's see. I'm uh, here. Okay, Uma, we'll put you on the big screen. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so where? So tell us where you're from and tell us about your project. We we'll gave everybody like five or so minutes. You can take as you know whatever's comfortable. Tell us about your project. Um, I, I so I so I just to be clear, I'll just I'll share a, a painting that I chose from this month and that you mean by project. Sure. Yes, we have a little more time because we did not get swamped with people, which is good. So don't rush. Sure. Yourself. Uh, so uh, my name is Damian Lee. I live in Oregon, Salem, Oregon. Um, I've been painting for sort of off and on for five or seven years or, so, or something in there. Um, I did the 30 by 30 challenge the last couple of years. I always associated, it seems, with um, staying at home for the pandemic. <laughs> or better work. <laughs> Um, I don't know what else to share. This I, this is the the most recent one. I let's see how nice. much. Nice, nice. Uh, the lighting is. I guess just um, thinking about things I learned. I I don't know. I guess it's sort of a small thing, but um, I, I I intended that I brought the sky color down too far, and I had intended this tree shape to be higher. And I just kind of overlapped it and it worked out really well, this little yeah. corner right here. So it's sort of a small learning thing, I guess, but just sort of like sometimes just putting shapes together on the painting um, or, or kind of composing things. I guess sometimes I feel like, oh, I got to get everything kind of to fit like I planned, I guess. So just how it overlaps like that worked out really nice. So. Yeah. I like the uh, contrasting color. You got a little purple in there with all the green leafy nest. Yeah. So having the purple as the opposing color and then yellow is a triadic, I guess, probably. I really like the way you cut around, I'm going to call them irises, whatever the flowers are. So the uh -huh. sharp white edge around there is nice, nice and clean, right? So that's one of the benefits of kind of going indirect, right? Is that uh, we haven't wet our paper so you can get those sharp edges. That's nice. Yeah. And how you got a little bit of the color into the sky. So a little bit of the purple into the sky. Was that yeah. or just happy accident? I, well, yeah, it was. Um, I mean, I didn't intend to mirror this color, but it was kind of a suggestion of clouds or I guess or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. So it works, right? Because you get a little bit of each color into the other, right? So yeah, yeah that turned out good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I kind, of, I kind of overworked my flowers here in this dark kind of, Got the better. Oh, okay. and then I kind of was experimenting with lifting. I wanted to, I did the whole shape and then tried to lift it off, but that didn't quite work the way I so hope. Maybe. Lifting the sign out? Yeah, right. Like I tried to scrape off the, the dark to, and then add the sign in afterwards. Well, okay, that's tricky. Mm -hmm. So, how did yeah. you finally get it? Uh, the sign's sharp right. now. What did you finally do? That's what I did. I mean, I, oh, okay. I kind of experimented. I just used a piece of paper and I scraped with a, my paintbrush. Oh, that worked way better than I would ever would have guessed it could work. <laughs> you got a sharp edge that way. I've never been yeah, able to. Yeah, right, that. right. Yeah, right. Like I did it's still a little, I don't know. It just looks a little muddy, I guess. But. Well, that's true. Uh, yeah. Sign sharp now. What did you find me to do? Oh, that's, <laughs> that, I did, that's, I, I mean, I, that's. If I can interrupt you for a second. Someone's got the YouTube playing because I can hear myself echoing. Did you hear that echo? I, I, I got it. I muted. Okay, good. All right. Sorry. <laughs> we were over, yeah. Yeah, I think we um we were overlapping there. Like, I, I was just saying that I this was as sharp as I could get it with the using it. I just put a piece of paper down and and scraped right up to the paper, and then I kind of darkened the back a little bit more, but that's what gave it a little bit of an overworked right. look. Came back to it. Yeah, so then the blacks end up being maybe blacker than you want. Right? Yeah, yeah, right, it looks a little. Yeah, because it's a bit like an ink drawing where the black is so, so strong. But yeah. that's okay, you know, that's okay. I, I, yeah, I really like the sharp edges you're getting to me. That's one of the key things if we're gonna paint directly is then the edge of the shape is the drawing. So sure. in your house, you've got nice peaked roofs the the white on top of that hill, that uh, wall in the back there that retaining uh -huh. wall where I can see the upper facing edges of the wall it's really nice to see that crisp white so you're obviously not new to brush control that's great 
Yeah. Only thing I would maybe have not done is quite so strong on the cracks in the front rocks. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. these lines here. Yeah. Sometimes I like to start the line like that and then just let it vanish. So yeah. I'll start the crack and end the crack, but don't let it. Don't actually draw it in the middle. Sure. I join them. But uh, I, that's now I'm nit I have to find something to say, so I'm only nitpicking. Yeah, no, I, I, I kind of agree with that. I think I got a little yeah. carried away there. <laughs> uh, Venice, is that your street? It is. I was like, you know what? I don't know where to paint this last day. I'm just going to sit in front of my. <laughs> that's what I did on the last day, too. I'm just like, I have to go somewhere, so I'm just drawing whatever I say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thank yeah. You. Thank you, too. Yeah. So uh, I have Mary Letham Jensen. Letham Jensen, Are you, is Mary out there? I guess not, maybe not. If I skip by you, we'll, just, we'll catch you on the way she back. Come back, she was right here, I think she left. Okay, well, we'll swing back to her. Uh, what about Deb Campbell? I know you're out there, I saw you. Hi, okay, so give us your, give us your voice back. Thank you, Deb, and... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I just, I just put a chewy mint in my mouth. <laughs> um, uh, uh, professionally, I'm a graphic artist. Yeah, um, can you hear me? Oh, okay, all right. So that's, is that Mary? Okay, we'll go back to Mary. We'll get you down. Oh. <laughs> um, no, well. All right, we got you, Mary. Okay, now go with Mary, go with Mary. Yeah. Sorry, you're, you're muted, Mary. I don't know if you muted yourself or if Uma did that to you. <laughs> Mary, you need, you need to unmute you're, yourself. You're muted. Yeah. Your, your microphone in the lower left corner. There we go. Um, I'm not sure what- Now I can hear you, perfect. That's good, yeah. There's a really long delay. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm. Uh, mm. If you're looking at YouTube, you need to shut your YouTube down because there's a lot. I'm not muted. Okay. Do you have. Do no, you have it's, the, it's on. <laughs> do you have the live stream playing? The YouTube stream playing? Uh, or if there's anybody in the house, you can kick off. If you have somebody playing video games, you can kick them off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a technology can be frustrating like this. It brings us all together, but it also gives us new challenges. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't we carry? Why don't we move on? Uh, 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 and if it catches up for you at the end, we'll tag you in at the end. Okay. If she didn't get that, maybe you could message her. <laughs> okay. So back to you again, Deb. Sorry, you are okay. in the game. <laughs> technology, love it. Um, professionally, I'm a graphic artist, yeah. and um, I think a few seasons back, Uma made a comment about my um, ovals and rounds and curves and <laughs> <laughs> with my painting strokes. Well, that's where it comes uh, from. Years and years and years and years of very structured artwork. Yes. So I'm probably um, about six or so years I've been painting. Mm. And loving it, and it was a really big challenge to start it because I'm so everything I do is so structured and so black and white and so neat. So I still have trouble loosening up, and every now and again I thrill myself, and I actually do. But most of the time, I'm very structured. Mm. Too many years, you see. <laughs> so um, anyway, so I've done it every year, so five years for me, very and I love it. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, allowing myself to paint every day for 30 days. It's brilliant. So I thank you both. Oh, no, thank you for doing it. So do you find the direct approach helps you be more fresh, more free? Yes, yes. It was very challenging at first. Like I, I really I struggled with it because I wanted to put my lines in. But seriously, since my first year of doing it with you, I now no longer ever sketch ever. Great. Great. Yeah. So actually, I never, I never ever pick up a pencil. I might sometimes. I'll do lines with my brush, 
but you know like it's planning like I think Mark you do as well sometimes when I've seen some of your well, and I still I still draw as well if the subject demands it like it's not I am You're, the rigid person ever rules or just guidelines <laughs> I know that I know him it definitely never does um your sketches mark um of your figures your life drawing which as you know I commented I absolutely love it's one of my most favorite things to do I think then that's a different thing because then I just sketch you know I, I've never actually turned them into paintings oh, I've just okay. I've just sketched them what, and what um, I don't know how I go to do a live painting with it <laughs> What are you going to show us from your 30 by 30? Oh, look, I don't know, because as you know, I sort of got into this tomato thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's <the> perfect circle. <laughs> <laughs> so that was accidental. Um, and uh, and I so for the last 20 days, it's been all about tomatoes. <laughs> but perhaps that hasn't really shown my painting skills. Um, but um, well, you certainly got the... The smooth skin of the tomato, perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, that was the first one I did. Mm -hmm. um, nice, yeah. With mm -hmm. my onions. Yes. And that's probably where I really love to paint. I love still life. And I set my goal this this season to do 30 still lives. Because well, I do love those like perfect shadows. Mm -hmm. that they cast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how, how did you get the balanced color in the shadows? Um, I, I really probably, you mean as in these ones here? Yeah, there's a right above your fingernail. Yeah, the little light, yeah. the light in um, the shadow. Look, I don't, I don't know. I have a very steady hand yeah. and I, I, I don't know. I just can do the, I can just do it. And okay. then I just let a lot of, <laughs> I don't know. I, it's it's I don't true. Know. It's true. There's a time that comes uh, in your level of practice. It yeah. becomes, it became harder and harder for me to, Tell, tell people what I was doing because I'm like I yes. don't remember what I did. Like, yes. here's my here's my strategy, but then it, my brain turns off until it's done. So, yeah, that's yeah. right. And I and I think what happens is you you just do it um, fairly naturally, and you don't really think too much about it. Um, yeah, a little curl. So my of second one was paper. very um, mongy um, uh, mandarins off my tree that was still green, so right. I was still going in the same type of thing but this was looser shadows yeah I like the background has more kind of color and color mixing which is nice yeah, yeah. it is so I I did one layer um I just let it run and then I let it dry and I actually did three different layers yeah. after it had dried on that just a little bit of experimenting well, um, uh, but, if you like to get to the darks, as I see you are trying to get all the way to the dark, yes. then watercolor, watercolor is tough to build up that depth. Yes. So sometimes yes. you've got to hit the dark three times. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Try. The limit, right? Don't you find if after three or close to three, it starts to feel overworked, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, 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 I find that that's something that is very hard um, for me to control is um, to stop and not keep going with it, yeah. you know, because it's that little bit of um, perfectionist, you know, like I can make it a little bit neater or something like that. Yeah. It's trying yeah, to do it. it. Like a spidey sense, like it feels like I should be done. And I, I see yes. two more things and I start to get more and more worried. Like uh, you're playing Jenga. If I pull, if I do one more thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it. Like just stop and let myself stop. Yes. Yeah. So but I've learned so much from this um, because I love looking at everyone's work. I absolutely love it. And the comments and mm -hmm. everything. And, and of course, you know, like I started by doing a funny thing with a tomato and then uh, mm -hmm. my imagination went nuts. And um, <laughs> I have done a lot of cho children's illustrations. And, book illustrations. Oh, I see, I see. and that's the natural way to bring the storytelling. It's fun yes. when someone has a project and you get to see it evolve over the days. Uh, I yeah. think our group is starting to kind of come together where uh, we have regular people now. And we're, yes. And when you've done it a couple of times, then you feel, don't you feel that now I can do something a little more casual? Because I, yes. I know I can hit the deadline. That's not the question. So now yeah. I can play around with what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, so it's, um, yeah, it's been wonderful. I love it. And it's going to be a little bit sad 
now that that's finished, but maybe I'll get things done in my house. <laughs> Since you're such a technician, give us one quick tip for how we can improve our direct watercolors. Oh my goodness, Mark. Um, can I think on that? <laughs> okay. Uh, let me, can I give you a tip? Put you on um, the spot. You've put me on the spot. Uh, one thing beginners always do wrong. Well, do you know one thing that um, I find that beginners do, whether it's actually a watercolour thing or it's everything, is actually painting or, and or drawing what you see rather than what you think. So when it comes to my shadows, I'm not, I'm not thinking about where a shadow should go. I'm actually painting where the shadow is going at the time that I'm doing that painting. And sometimes it looks a little bit weird, but that's my little thing that I'm trying to do is actually paint what I see mm. rather than what I think. Right. And, and sometimes like it looks observe, weird. Observe, use yes. your eyes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah, sometimes you'll see something that looks wrong, but it's right there yes. in front of you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay, so teaching yourself to accept what's in front of you, even if you're confused at what you're seeing, maybe. Yeah. Yes, a particularly perspective-wise, when I was doing some of my little tomato things in little chairs, the shadows were throwing off at an unusual angle, but I painted it that way anyway because had, I just thought... You, you had little physical chairs. You didn't make that up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I want to... <laughs> I actually do. I do have little physical... I, I have a very huge Victorian doll's house. Okay. And it's filled with furniture. So actually everything really was with something live. <laughs> Even funny. the tomatoes down on the beach. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Sir. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so uh, Uma, did, did we get Mary sorted out or? Uh... Yes, we did. And she's Very back. good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Tell us about yourself in your 30 by 30. Um. This was the first time. Oh, um, I'm Mary Latham Jensen. Um, I'm a, a developmental biologist. So, um, and I've been doing watercolors for a lot, probably just for about the last five to 10 years, but I've always kind of drawn, done some kind of drawing stuff. Um, and mine was, my goal was to, I had two goals. One, to be more deliberate about putting down color because I have a tendency to put down too many layers and then um, things get up, end up getting muddied or, or overworked. And then also I, I just wanted to, I like painting water. So um, mm. I wanted to get better at that. So that was, okay. this, <laughs> this was my favorite one. Oh yes, I remember but, the one coming through, yeah. Yes, so this is from observation, from a photo or from life? From a photo. Okay, good. Yes, because how do you break down the ripples? Very nice. And so you had you you perceived there's two colors in the ripples, like it's showing you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, or multiple. Actually, there's I have there's sort of a blue and have... blue and brown thing going on here, right? Yeah. Yeah. So where do the two colors come from? Um. Well, there was just well part of it just me. <laughs> There was just a dis very distinct light color. Um, I, uh, that was actually the only thing in the picture. So <laughs> was it was time. probably re reflections from buildings or something. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, um, reflections. okay, reflections. Yeah, great. Okay, good. So I like how you simplified it. I, I think it's sort of simplified into a, the composition of two colors primarily, and then you let the watercolor do its thing. So with a, such a tough subject like that, it's a good choice. Yeah. And then, um, and then just this one being, um, I liked because I was able to get dark colors down and contrast without putting down too many layers. Very good. Um, so, it, so it didn't get muddied. Um, this is your breakthrough with that? Uh, yeah. More paint or different pigments? Um, more paint. Um, I have, I don't know. It's, it's really hard to sometimes to like, really load up on pigment before I go down the first time. And so stuff always ends up being more washed out um, yeah. when I want it. Yeah. And I found one of the things working for me, because I haven't been doing this very long, I'm much better if I work at 
two or three pitchers at the same time because I don't screw them up by putting <laughs> paint on something that hasn't dried completely yet. Mm. So yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, mm. you need to force yourself not to fuss it. So mm. yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, you so you have a science background, developmental biology mm-hmm. science. So uh, do you find that it makes you more rigorous in your experimenting? Um, uh, I don't know. I think there's a, there's a lot of creativity and um, different ways of looking at something, and I think it's very analogous to what I do at work too. Problem solving and um, I kind of get to go. Uh, a little off book maybe <laughs> and paint, paint what I'm feeling. You know, I can tell when I have a bad mood, there's not a whole lot of happy colors in the pictures. <laughs> well, yes, yes. So. Uh, I was t- commenting in the morning, we had a um, person who was a music teacher, I believe. Uh, and uh, or she had been a composer and musicians know how to practice. They have a whole culture of practice, which artists don't have this kind of thing of we're going to do drills. And scientists have a culture of thinking about the, their experiments before they start. So there's all these ways that people learn. It's a little different than artists who tend to just learn by messing things up. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, the science only about, if you're batting um, 200, 250, you're, you're doing really well. So <laughs> there's a lot of failure in science. <laughs> well, and, and that's that's what's great about about the watercolor sketches. I like that I can do a whole bunch because they're fast. And if you're working small, they're kind of, they're fast. And so if one doesn't turn out, you can still do three more that day. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. If uh, one, in, in, I used to do figure drawing a lot and I would use the same 10 panels. This is back when I was painting in acrylics and I would only keep one. I would paint over the other nine. And then every session I'd keep one and paint over the other nine. So I always had one great one. <laughs> Okay, all right. Did you have any others you wanted to show us? Or uh... I think we are out of time, Mark. Okay, all right. She says I'm being too generous <laughs> with the time. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, good. It was always good to see your water pop pop up in the stream there. So let's thank see. you. This is this has been great. I really enjoyed it. Very good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So is there a Charlene out there? Charlene Hall. No, Charlene? Okay, yes, so that... yes, I, I'm oh, here. Very good, sorry, sorry. Oh, I love to see these things over your shoulder here. There's some very nice paintings in yours too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, tell uh, us about yourself in your 30 uh, by 30. So uh, I have been doing watercolor probably for about five years now. And I started in, uh, we, uh, well, I have a background in, scenic painting and theater set design. And so I did that until I retired and we moved to Bermuda for two years as my husband's work. And um, while I was there, because I didn't have a visa or anything, I got into plein air painting. And um, that was uh, my initiation into watercolor then. And and then, we moved here to Western Washington. And so I kind of have continued doing watercolor and um, plein air painting. And I paint with a plein air group here. And- I get, were you looking at Winslow Homer's watercolors of Bermuda? Oh yeah. 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 There's a lot, of, a lot of good artists went to Bermuda to paint. So it's kind of funny to be a beginner and paint there. <laughs> so what, uh, what did you do this, this 30 by 30? This, well, this is the first time I did it. I had never done um, direct watercolor before, and except uh, once when we were out playing our painting with our group, um, I forgot my pencil. And so I had to start. And That's how it started. Said, <laughs> and somebody said, oh, you did direct watercolor. And I went, what? And so when I saw this um, come up, I thought this would be a really great challenge and learning experience for me because I'd, I'd never really done it before. So. Do, do you have one you'd like to show us? Yeah, I'll, I have actually two. So this was the one I was happy with for my first uh, try at it because I uh, figured out how to get the big shape in. And once I could get the big silhouette in, mm-hmm. I, uh, it all kind of came together and then I could divide up the shapes to make it work. And um, 
So, so the under color, the, the steel color under the boat uh, unifies everything and then you can build the details on top. Yeah, so I can get the silhouette of the boat the way I wanted it. Yeah, very and good. That, that kind of led me to this of my last ones. And I, I don't normally do boats because I find them real complicated, but I did this one the same way where I just got the center shape in, in kind of a Payne's gray to get the silhouette of all the boats yeah. in. I remember this one and I, I uh, kudos about the reflection uh, being so consistent to the foreground. Like this is very hard to do. Great job. And uh, that you, you're obviously patient enough to get your sky and water in and get that perfect before you start, right? Yeah, that's what I, so, I the night before I, I did the sky and the water and I was, I was actually really happy with the way that came out. It was just basic, really simple. The night was, before. Okay, now that is an interesting yeah. trick. I have never done that. So yeah, you knew dry. where you were going to go. And, uh, it was dry, just real simple sky and water. And because I, the photo I worked from was pretty good. And so that helped a lot. But um, okay, I, was, okay. I was afraid to start because I was afraid I would screwed up <laughs> that's a good trick some of the uh, artists from singapore we we painted with at one of the symposiums they do that because it's so humid in singapore it just will not dry during a plein air session so oh, they yeah. they'll do a sky the night before and paint everything on top oh yeah so well this isn't wasn't plein air so this was just right, right yeah here. catching up here i'm catching up to you so um yeah i mean there's there's nothing to criticize uh, about your drawing it's incredible the drawing of all these ships uh, the reflection is excellent. I like, of course, the way the you know, reflection is a little bit more broken up than the ships. So just this degree of less resolve to show the slight motion in the water. Um, you have you have in your these two paintings very very few totally white whites. What do you think about right? That? right. How, do you, how do you feel about that? Um, well, both of them were. That was kind of the way they they were. Like this was just after sunset. Yeah, because it's a little so, more nocturnal. Yeah. So it was a pretty gray, gray scene. And All right, fair enough. Yeah, fair there enough. were two, two spots that I had to put in later that were actually lights that were on the boat. So that's just a little wash there. And then there was the other, the other um, okay. All right. So just, a, just these things to like uh, break up the reflection in the water a bit and put a little, yeah. Thing. yeah. Yeah. So uh, great. Okay. Well, I, I can see why it was conscious because it fits the whole color scheme of this thing. I see in your paintings over your shoulder, maybe you do like a more somber, uh, darker tone. So maybe oh, think. those are, well, those are where I did a, uh, I hadn't done oil painting before. So it was a beginning oil painting class. And then, and then this one was, uh, was it gouache? So. Ah. All right, well, it's very interesting to see the different kind of uh, vision that, that you, you can get these. Uh, uh, there's always a lot of, uh, in my watercolors, a lot of scintillating paper and sharp edges and yours are very, very complete. And I really admire that smooth tone that you got into the underlying washes. So then you're drawing on top as a good foundation. So yeah, yeah very nice. thank you. All right, yeah, thank you. Thank you uh, for uh, sharing them in the group and for bringing them here. Hope you'll be back next year. Oh yeah, it was great. So where are we at? I, think I have someone named Amanda, first name only, right? I don't think we have Amanda. Okay. And right. we do. So I don't make think we have Monica. And no Monica. Well, then do you want to switch to your group? Sure. Uh, Yogesh is the first one. Yogesh, you want to put up your uh, video sure. on? Yes. Hi, do you want to say hello <laughs> to everybody and say where you're from? Okay, so this is this is Yogesh Aundkar. I'm basically from India and I'm here in Michigan working as an automobile design engineer in General Motors. Ah. And I have this habit around watercolor painting almost 10 to 12 years back in India. And when I came first in the Chicago, in the States, I have ample time after my office hours. So what to do next? So then I started uh, exploring the, my watercolor style and other things. So this habit started now almost uh, 10 to 12 years as a serious matter. And this 30 by 30 challenge really helped me to explore the different, different subjects, what I did. 
so normally i put the landscape only and most of the time i add the green and other stuff like yellow ochre green and sky blue but now because of this challenge i used to have the other uh, uh, what you call it as a uh, exploration of other colors other um, uh, subject and other style out of what i basically i i am the self taught person means i have a lot of books i am uh, reading a lot of books and helping and take the help from the facebook and other stuff and youtube ideas so this is the way what i thought 30 by 30 is the great for me and normally this is the first time i did this direct painting and i got a one uh, style that uh, with the uh, light color i draw everything in a one shot and that is the and then i just put the colors there that is the way i started working on this subject okay thank you for the background and yes uh, share your paintings with us please and you sharing your favorite uh, painting yogesh yeah it is one of the favorite because this is the first time i did directly uh, with the pen the perspective in my this one automobile this one stuff right and i like the shadow and the light effect here yeah. so this is one of the favorite yeah your shadows are stunning especially on the especially on the red stripe of u hall where i'm glad you didn't just put a blue you darkened the red and you definitely have a very deft hand i mean the drawing is excellent uh um, hard to believe it's direct watercolor yeah it is there yeah. and what i like is that i like one of the style now here yeah, this i'm exploring that thing see the shadow shadow most of the time it gives you the feel of the abstract painting and on the top of that light section we have your original object or whatever you work on mm. so this is the one of the way i am thinking of sh shadow as the abstract and your object is a real one Hmm. hmm. Now right. I am exploring such uh, such painting now. Means I got some idea now. If you see the shadow effect, it is almost abstract painting. It is. It is often. And, yeah. And on the top of that, you will get your real uh, what you call it, a photo or picture or whatever the subject you have. Understand. So this is one of the this one. I means a favorite one. I like just working on that uh, on this uh, painting basically. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, just uh, recently, I have finished one of. This one. Hmm. So this is just a finished. Uh, means I, my target is to have the complete thirty pitch, uh, thirty paintings. So now uh, today I finished almost four, or five to six painting in a short. Uh, in a, my limited time so i thought okay this is i got an, another style means there are so many reference pictures with me but i i feel okay sometime i will use this but now it is a 30 by 30 challenge i have to explore everything in my library and whenever i saw oh, it is not a subject but i got the subject now correct with, correct with this 30 by 30 and i have and i in because of this practice now i get the eye on a subject okay there is a reference photo but still that will be the good reference it is true that doing it over and over again develops your eye and also develops your yeah uh, preference for a composition and sometimes composition it, yeah 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 it, here it, it, the, yeah yeah that's the yeah that's it it develops so much that whatever photo you are given you can actually fit your composition to the yeah, photograph yeah. eventually um you have a very stable hand i mean that is, is beautiful. If you want a crit, I can give it, but I'll be splitting hair. Um, what would you like me to do? What? Are you seeking a critique or you wanted to share your paintings? Because that was... No, enough. I, I want a critique one. I, I want a critique. I have a lot of... I mean, I, if you want, I will share. No issue. Your time no, is not... the constraint. Time is the constraint. So you yes. give me the critique. No issue. So the critique is, I mean, there really is no critique. You have beautiful, you have beautiful drawing. And like you said, if when the eye develops, the style develops too. Right now I can see yeah. only two styles, but still a little tight. Um, often uh, people confuse tightness and inaccuracy. That is not what I mean. 
when 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 you become loose you do not have to draw <coughs> physically fantastical uh, <laughs> pictures they, they should adhere to some kind of physics and perspective and you, yours do uh, uh, i find you you relax when you repeat strokes so when your strokes are repeating you go in so it's it, i find that it's usually when people don't have stamina so it is not even a critique you build stamina to paint for 4 hours then you can do a 1 hour painting with the deepest focus yeah, then true. you can do fence 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 post line on the road line on the road line on the road and then all yeah. the trees behind at the same stroke so the reason you repeat is you are surging then you're taking a break in thinking then you surge then you so that's that's what it's telling me that you, you just need more stamina yeah let's and how will you know how if you have stamina when you are putting ultimate garbage out you can't stop you will get to a point where only garbage is coming out on your on your board keep up keep up and when you have absolutely nothing left to give paint one more time paint one more yes. time that's where the stamina builds yes yeah and i i think you will see it and sometimes when you are well beyond your thinking power but you've done so much of muscle work some gems come out at that point oh that's good yeah <laughs> so, so i thought yeah the same thing painting. yeah same experience i got sometime if while doing this you all painting my experience is just to uh, see the picture and even i couldn't uh, take the brush uh, and paint but i only i'm just uh, observing the shadow effect and that's the story so it takes some time also instead yes, of uh, yes putting uh, painting 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 but that is another story you're right i'll just share one thing uh, a teacher once told me he said stop painting he said um you know you have to spend one hour looking at paintings every day oh ah, that's true and i do uh, so you can't just be mindless if you do mindless study then if you have a bad habit it reinforces bad habits so if you want to improve you'll have to think and then reinforce other habits Yeah, uh, I don't always do it, but this is something Jerry. No, that, that is true. Yeah, and because this thirty by thirty, uh, even I mean, it is a good. Uh, what most of the time I put uh, first with the value sketches and all the stuff. So instead of doing the value sketches, start with the direct painting. So at least you will fix your positions or your composition. I most of the time I saw okay, I want to repaint this because of I I am not. Um, For properly composed or the tree is not in the proper right. proper place yeah. like that. So this is another way. What I thought, okay, this is a good idea. Thirty by thirty direct watercolor. Instead okay. of value sketches, you start with your way, and then you can uh, make another painting. That Correct. this is a thumbnail or not a thumbnail actually, but it's uh, make a small painting, direct watercolor painting, and do the another one. Understood. That is what yeah. I thought. Thank you so and much. Is, I am. This is the other just to just to clear the subject. When I was in a kitchen table, a lot of chilies are available. So I thought, okay, I will put some. My daughter put some chilies. So I thought, okay, we will put in a progression. And then the other subject. And this subject like most in my office also, because in our in in our uh, uh, one of the session I. share my painting they like oh. this painting oh that is good uh, subject when that that means the kitchen is also the one of the uh, subject um, uh, media what that's i thought good. yeah yeah that's yeah, yeah that's good thanks thanks for your more time and uh, you go <laughs> so we will be in touch no issue all right yeah. thank you yogesh next up is pam uh, don't mean to cut off anybody but time is a constraint pam loop is you're up next okay Hi, um, I'm Pam Lopez, and I live in Las Vegas. Um, I've been I've taken to watercolor since I retired about five years ago. I used to be a batik artist um, a couple of decades ago, and then I went into full time teaching, and my art fell by the wayside. So once I retired, I decided I needed to take up the challenge of watercolor to keep the mind and body in sync. and i absolutely love this challenge of direct watercolor because i too tend to be very very structured and i want to loosen up 
So my goal for this particular project this month of June was to try and loosen up as much as I could, to think in terms of tonal values and light and shadow, um, and to play with my pigments and the water and see how they interact with each other and learn more about hard edges, soft edges. I'm, I'm very much in the initial stages of learning. Um, so that's basically what I've been doing. Some of the stuff that I have done has been more structured work like this one. Um, we go for a walk early in the morning at, the, at about dawn and I've tried to, because I'm with my husband and the dog, I cannot stop to paint. So I take pictures and then come home and finish my paintings. Um, I use the backs of old paintings <laughs> wow. oh, to wow. do ones. So I played a lot with, um, with just letting the colors flow and play around and see what, so it's all very experimental. Fantastic. And I've tried different areas. Another one that I, this is another one catching light early in the morning. Wow. And all my work is very, very experimental. And I'm hoping that I can learn in the process. Doing a portrait was new for me. I hadn't done portraits before, but I followed um, two artists that I like very much, Hazel Sohn being one of them, and tried my hand at that. This one seems to be something that a lot of people liked, but this is my least attractive one. Um, I think I fiddled too much with it. I, I kept going back and forth, back and forth. Um, and I wasn't happy with this one at all. Hmm. Okay. The, your set of paintings where you had four per page, I, and even one before that, I mean, just stunning work, absolutely stunning work. Look at that sky, the, the reflect. So a lot of people get waves, right? But the reflection of the wave when it hits the sand, the wet sand, oh, that that's that's beautiful. Your shadows on the pathways, the fact that you didn't make green when you're yellow and the blue um, on the top left, I mean, just gorgeous handling. You definitely have a, you know how your pigments work and you know how to put a graded wash down and you have the patience of putting the graded wash down one one touch uh it's just stunning stunning absolutely stunning talking I, about the one that you did not like um <laughs> let's let's dissect that it's easier to pick by the way nobody should feel of uh no it's easy for me to pick other people's work because there's a certain distance. So uh, just know that. No, 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 don't worry. <laughs> I won't be offended. <laughs> this is why I'm here. Of course. So, okay. You absolutely know in your brush, when you were painting the four pieces on the paper, you felt that peace and calm. You, you did not feel peace and calm here. You've touched it again and again. And because you made two, yeah, there were two issues. You had to touch them and the touches are dry, which meant the amount of color you made in your palette was not enough at any no. point of time, which meant it dried. Then you had to match colors, it didn't. So then you had to try again and then, then you can't undo that because once because it's a transparent medium and you can see every touch. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So and when you realize that at the top, when you realize that at the top, that's when I give you permission next time to stop painting, cut off the top piece and start again, because otherwise the frustration grows. There's just no undo on that. Very true. Very true. Um, I totally agree. And in fact, what I will do is put this under the sink and yeah. wash it completely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's a pretty, and again, I'm painting on the back of another painting and I'll just wash it off and then play around but I did these after that frustration ah. so came later yeah yeah um there are four planes one two three four five six okay so you have a lot of planes 
planes are very useful for landscapes. They bring back, bring forth focus. I like your planes are going warm, cool, warm, cool. The confusion happens where the far off skyscrapers and the mountains start to blend. You have tried to make the skyscrapers warm by adding some pink slash magenta, but they're very uniform. They're very uniform and that would be okay if the contrast between the mount, if that would be okay if the value contrast between the mountain and the skyscrapers was high, but it's I, not. Yep, yep, I see that, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And, and like could, I said, there's too much fiddling in this one, just far too much fiddling. So I would put a plastic transparent sheet on top of it, like a saran wrap, bring out a black marker and just define one or two tall buildings and see if that fixes the composition. Okay. Yeah, and then that's that. That's my way to figure out if things work or without touching it. That's um, an idea. Yep. The yep. closer foreground, but uh, sorry, I'm doing such a technical analysis. But the closer foreground is gorgeously done, very clean, and you've used a complementary color scheme, a green and a pink, to show distances. And um, every time there's a ninety degree angle, you've changed values. Just beautiful. You have such great observation. You have great observation. You just got frustrated at the back in this painting. <laughs> I did. I also, I think, uh, took advice from too many people and then really messed it up. I should go with my own instincts, maybe. <laughs> Thank you great. very, very much indeed. This was great. I was glad to have you, Pam. Um, and Luxor, I saw the Hotel Luxor in the back. So that's great. <laughs> Chris, you're up next. Oh. Hi, uh, I'm Chris. Um, I'm from Oakland, California. Uh, this is my first uh, 30 by 30. I've oh. painted a long time, but I haven't painted watercolors for a very long time. So I've used this as a chance to experiment with papers and pigments and to try and loosen up. Well, wow. okay. So, um, work with us. Sorry? Do you have your work to share with yes. us? Yes. Um, I have two. The one I finished uh, last today was a photograph. Um, that's the one on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it properly here. Yeah. It's yeah, a I cactus flower. Yeah. And the other two I painted actually in plein air. Um, there are these uh, irises. Oh. Oh, yes. I remember them. And um, two roses. Wow. What brush do you use, Chris? Uh, <clears throat> on this one, I actually use quite a small brush. Um, I think it was one that actually came with a um, paint set. The um, I can't remember which make it is. It's probably a, maybe a, a two or a three. It's quite small. OK. Um, this one, on this one, I think I'll probably use my normal size eight. Um, yeah. And on this one, I used uh, just the eight on this one. It's, this one's from a photograph. But it's so subtle. Your yellows, your radiation in yellows, it's so subtle. You want to turn your paper clockwise 90 degrees. Um, clockwise. Yes, thank you. Oh. Gorgeous, very subtle. Uh, why are you sitting? Very, oh, this is from a photo you said. This one's from a photograph. I, I take a lot of photographs like this. Um, these are my own photographs. Um, so I deliberately played down the problems you get when you work in photographs. You get much higher contrast. The shadows use the darker than they are in real life. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to imagine seeing this for real rather than working from the photograph. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Is this yeah. your, are you happiest with this one? Is this your best Yeah, this, one? this one is basically um, finding the right paper, the right pigments, and um, it's the end of 30 days of practice, basically. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, the, this one I like best, uh, well, this one and the other one. Um, uh, this one, the little two roses and yeah. the iris are the ones that are the best for the um, yeah. 
yeah. plein air because, and both of these really quick. This one was probably 20 minutes oh. and, and the other one was probably even less because this one I did when I was actually just standing there. I didn't sit down to paint this one. Mm. So this one's pretty quick. That That is looking, yeah. yeah. They're both alive. The iris one, what is that brush? Sorry, I'm harping on the brush, but I'm getting bothered by the brushes here. <laughs> Which brush <laughs> did you use here? This one was, I think, was my eight uh, sable travel, travel brush. It's a um, stable brush, but then why isn't it picking up pigment? Are you using dry pigments? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm using um, pans, pans, yeah, half yeah. pans. Okay, 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 that explains it. Okay. Um, wonderful. Um, so I assume your comment there is about the pans, how dry pans are. That it's it's hard to pick up enough color from right. pan watercolor. So I know, of course, they're super convenient, right? It's very natural to use them. Yeah. But uh, a lot of us who've been urban sketching for a while, when the pans start to run out, I just squeeze my tubes into the empty tray, and eventually, no more dry pans, and it's just tube color in the same in the same box. Yeah, and the, um, in, the box. in this one, they they were actually. Uh, this was, apart from the blue, these were two paints squeezed on top of the yeah. dried pan. So that I think is what you're getting at, right, Uma, that uh, it's really hard to get the pan to give you enough color. So it ends up being scratchy. Whereas that one, the, uh, yeah. you know, the petals the, have more bloom in there. Yeah. Plus this one is uh, uh, um, cold press and the, these other ones are uh, hot press. So they're, they take, yeah. The you know the pigment tends to sit on the surface of these yeah. rather than yeah, yeah. Uh, you're absolutely right, Mark. And also, what I was trying to get at is, the, I I I can see from this particular one that he can estimate how things will look in real life, and he has control over values. There is really nothing to crit. Um, it's it's masterful. I I don't I'm not in the position to crit this, but I was getting bothered by those brushes, and that's all I wanted to like be a detective and figure out why that color, that purple wasn't juicy and it was not juicy because you couldn't. Yes, I, I had a real problem trying to find that color and it shows in the in the painting. Yeah. Um, but like, like I was saying, the, the big experiment for me was finding a paper that works mm. the way I like to paint. And um, and brushes, some brushes were a little too stiff, some brushes are too soft, that kind of thing. That's right, that's right. Um, if you email me, I can recommend a few brushes afterwards. Uh, I, I like this paper a lot, what you are holding. Um, I also like yeah. the Tillman and Burn like uh, book that you have. Mm -hmm. um, and your drawing is great, I have... It's great. Oh yeah, that was the tip I wanted to say. Okay, spray, anybody who's using cakes, spray your cakes, lay them flat, then put a saran wrap over it and then close the top. It allows the pigments to sort of incubate and slush. Um, and it also seals it while doing that so you can carry it around. So whenever you get to the place, you can take off the saran wrap. It is a messy saran wrap at the end but at least your paints on the top layer, you get two mm of softness. <laughs> yeah, um, this is the current water, well, it's back to front, but it's Saunders Waterford. Yeah. That's this one. I understand, I understand. Lovely. Thank you so much, Chris, for Thank joining. Um, I'm gonna go to Bonnie uh, next. Bonnie, you're up next. Hi. And I'm gonna spotlight you. Hi. You wanna switch back with Omar, do you wanna? Or do you want to keep rolling or do you want to switch back? One, two, three, four. Uh, uh, Bonnie would be my last. Okay. Yeah, thank you for checking in. <laughs> Hi, so, um, so I'm um, a retired uh, biology teacher. So I'm, I, I just moved to Vermont um, uh, uh, almost a year ago. And uh, so I didn't, I, I actually studied um, art in college before I became a teacher a long, long time ago. And I was doing printmaking and um, a lot of oil painting. 
And uh, I kind of took up watercolor uh, to go along with science, my scientific drawing. So I, um, I've, I've enjoyed doing scientific drawing for many years and kind of taught my students, you know, how to do scientific drawings. So I'm very detail oriented. And so one of the things about watercolor is that um, I have to let go of, you know, not being able to be perfect. <laughs> and this direct watercolor has been great for that because, um, because I had to, uh, you know, like I was drawing, I was doing some birds, I was painting some birds, and I, I can never seem to get bird beaks right. You know, it takes me about 10 times to get the beak right. And so I just had to say, you know, that's it. Uh, it's not going to be perfect. Let it go um, with the birds. Um, so uh, I think that was really good about this uh, exercise, and I really enjoyed it. Plus the fact that I got through the 30 days, I, I did a painting every day, except today I have to finish my painting today. Um, so um, I, uh, I just, I have a couple of paintings to show this. Um, a quick uh, question to everybody. Yeah. Can everybody sees Bonnie's uh, video? It freezes for me. Yeah. I saw you freeze as well, uh, Bonnie. So okay. uh, bear with us, try to show us your piece yeah. and we'll tell you if we can see it. Okay. Because your audio is great, but you're... All right, there we go. Yeah. Okay, carry on. Okay. So this was a painting I did from a photograph that sent me, and it was taken on one of those GoPros as we were biking. I was biking with this person, and there were other people in the, in the picture and, and so forth. Kind of, um, you know, I took them out so I could simplify it. And... Uh, I, I, I liked it because I left a lot of white and I also the back, but I didn't spend a lot of time on it. It was really a challenge to get the bicycle, all the parts and everything proportioned. Right? So that was a really real challenge. Uh, but, uh, you know, I kind of liked the way it came out. And I, love uh, it. Um, I can't see if uh, there is a bicyclist further down the road because I see I feel there's a scale and therefore I can see where the bicyclist is going and there's a there's a distance you've created in the painting and I like it a lot yeah part of that is because it was shot with a GoPro they a very wide angle so you hear it on your helmet as you're riding um, so that that helped with the perspective <laughs> um, so uh, I don't know. I guess I could show some other other pictures. Sure. Sure, um, oh, so good. one of the ones I wanted to share with you was I watched your demonstration when you were painting the horses, and, um, and one of the things I commented about was that it's easier to paint something direct when you have areas of of color rather than when you have a lot of pattern because pattern is is hard without you know being able to use a pencil but i i took on the challenge of do the female uh mallard um and uh it, it was hard but i i um bonnie are you showing us anything because your um video has frozen again okay i'll just i'll just wait i guess and see okay ah, we just there. got a frame of the update so there's the duck yeah so first I painted the male mallard and I felt like it was like a lot of areas of color and that was easier because you, you just put the color in. With the female, I had to um, create the pattern and that's a lot harder and especially pattern and through painting potential. So that was the challenge with, um, with that. You're absolutely right, pattern, especially in um, animals, they are specific. They are not willy-nilly wherever you want. Um, so this pattern is not only beautiful, but your reflection, oh my goodness, your reflection of that duck, it's so subtle and it goes from the brown to green and both your this painting and the previous painting, uh, the, your color harmony is just fantastic. And you have that, uh, you have a certain palette um, and 
and you're sticking with it, but it's just so evocative. I mean, the small ripples that you can tell the speed of the duck from the ripples in the water right now. It's not going fast, but it's waddling and there's these smooth ripples. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's a stunning piece. It is a stunning piece. And the, Yes, uh, but, but from a scientific standpoint, you see the beak is a little too long. <laughs> the, the head is a little too, it's not quite the right shape, but... <laughs> I know. You said you had to learn something. I have to had to live with, with it. <laughs> well, you said you had to learn to get published. With. Go ahead. Yeah. So, what were you saying, Mark? Go ahead. I, I was just laughing. Couldn't contain myself. You, uh, you did say you were you were trying to learn to let go. Uh, so, yeah. uh, yes, we have to forgive ourselves these accuracies. I'd done some, my family's in science. So we did a lot of graphic design for scientists. And it's very, uh, what, what you guys know uh, is so much more than what the rest of us know. So we're like, ah, it doesn't matter. No one's going to know. And they're like, of course they're going to know. That's the whole point. It has to be perfect. So, yeah. Um, uh, your, your drawing is excellent. Uh, the drawing of the duck, the fact you got all the pattern of the, of the stuff um, I would encourage you to try some time limits, very short time. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever gone to life drawing and done the three minute poses or the two minute? Yeah, poses? yeah. I think I, I would benefit from that. Um, one of the things I was going to share is that I, I tend to use like a small brush, like this is like a three, you know, round brush. And I, and I kind of take a very light amount of paint and I kind of draw with it. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. I don't know whether that's mm -hmm. cheating. Well, but, I mean, it's, it's, there's no right or wrong, but yeah. I encourage you to get another tool in your toolkit. So yeah. like be, doing it like a pencil crayon drawing, like you're doing it like a pencil drawing where you have a fine point and you have a lot of control over the drawing and that makes you happy yeah. to, to use that control. So somebody else the other day, they said the only way they could do direct watercolor is to physically not have a pencil. If their pencil was in their bag, they had to draw lines and fill in the lines. Yeah. And I'm, no, I, I'm like, that's exactly me. I couldn't do it until I threw away my pencil. So maybe what you need to do is take a big flat brush, like a two inch flat, and then do some quick ones very fast. Right, right. And that will force you to learn to, to uh, use too much paint and only yeah. see the silhouette. You know, like you really have to sort of blow yourself up out of your comfort. Yeah, yeah. You can obviously draw, like, so that'll always still be there. And then um, if you can get yourself to play with flooding the color more, then you can always bring the drawing back in later. Yeah. Right. So that's, I always like to encourage people to let go because, uh, you know, you're, you're, it's just, there's nothing, you'll, you'll never be permanently harmed. We won't go crazy. We can always go back to being tight. But yeah. once you've experienced letting go, then sometimes you say, well, I don't need that anymore. I'm free of those shackles. So yeah. uh, that's just philosophical advice. Yeah, thanks. That's that's a good suggestion. All right. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Uh, yeah, thank you. Time. Thank you for the for the challenge and the encouragement. It was really great. Great. Next up for you is Glenda. Uh, Glenda. Glenda. Okay. And are you the, is this the last? Uh, there's Bonnie. Uh, no. Well, there's another person called. I forget the name. There's one more after this. Okay, so Glenda and we, uh, yes, someone joined late. Okay, so hi, Glenda. Tell us about your 30 by 30. Hi, um, I'm from um, the Gold Coast in Queensland in Australia. Mm -hmm. And I have a friend in a group I'm in from uh, America. And she always highlights things for me that she finds on Facebook relating to art. So she told me about the 3030 direct watercolor challenge. So I'm always up for a challenge with my art. Um, I have been creating art since I was a child, like most of us, and I did a teaching degree and I learned art for that. Um, I also did art at high school and probably 25 years I didn't do any art while I was raising children. I had four children. And then I started teaching my friend's children, my best friend's children, when we went on holidays. And um, I got back into it a little bit. My father was a watercolour artist. Mm -hmm. And uh, then another friend started um, an open studio group on Facebook where we just support each other. And we tended to paint every day and comment on each other's work, all positive comments. And I really got into it. And I've just been painting now for about three or four years, 
daily. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so this is my piece. It's, um, it's a copy from an impressionist. Can mm -hmm. you see that? Um, mm -hmm. My neighbour loaned me a book of, of the impressionists, and this has got a lot of white in it, as you can see. Um, and it was a challenge to me to get the child right. I felt fairly happy with the mother, but I often think about, you know, the early painters, how they always made the children um, the wrong size, the perspective was all wrong. Yeah, well, this one, I feel that the baby's too big for this mother, but, and getting the little fat arms was a challenge. Um, <laughs> so yes, his hand his hand is too large yeah um, the hand in yeah. the foreground yeah he's yeah, got big wrestler arms but that's uh, right. what i like is the size of his head so that's the thing they always did wrong is they drew little adults yes, so to did. get a child the head has to be bigger yeah yes that's right so yes. one thing i'll say about your subject matter the there are no um, shadows probably in this original painting because it's an impressionist, right? So they're very skylit. So when you're you're painting this diffuse light, it's very hard to render a face without the sculpting of the shadows. Yes. So we have the boy's features. Um, they're almost like a pattern on the roundness of his face. And so I see the fullness of his cheeks, but then in the ears, it's a bit soft, right? Yes, yes. So uh, I always look for a way to find shadows. And when people are drawing from, so from a painting like this, or a lot of people will paint from a fashion photo and they're often very well lit. So there aren't any strong shadows. And that is very difficult for the artist because where do we see the lines? Mm -hmm. How do we see the planes, the edges mm -hmm. of shapes without there being a dark shadow? So mm -hmm. that's given, that's what's giving you, I think this, you said there's a lot of white and then, I, I like these floating dark strokes that you have over to make the fabric and the feeling almost feel like they're maybe dancing a bit, but they, they seem to float above yes. the rest of the painting, right? Because they're not uh, darks created for a direction of light, right? They're darks mm -hmm. that are placed, I'll say decoratively uh, mm -hmm. over yes. the design, right? So, so that's, so those are some things that are standing up with the painting. But what I, I really like his hair, the way he has uh, the colors in his hair that match the colors in her scarf and her hat. So then that really ties the whole thing together. So mm -hmm. yeah, like it, it yeah. is, a, it is very charming. Yes. yes. Yeah. I found it charming. I think the yeah. subject matter, I've worked with um, mothers and babies now for 42 yes. years. So it yeah. appealed to me. Um, yeah. yeah. I like so the way I've... you got the little shadow of her, is it her hair under her chin? Uh, uh, there's a dark on her shoulder. Maybe it's the hair. Yeah, I think it was meant to be the hair coming around on the yeah. other side of the neck. Yeah. But that's an example because that little piece really draws the curve of the neck where mm. the neck and she's got a softness on her chin because she's maybe a, she's a healthy young girl. So mm. uh, that, so that's an example of what I mean about how the dark sculpt. Yes. yes. But that one little piece shows you where the neck is. Yes. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's a nice little detail. Yeah. Yes, um, yeah. I've learned a lot just from today because I didn't realise people do backgrounds and then add the shapes onto them. Um, I've never had any formal training in watercolour painting, so I'm self-taught. Um, yeah, and I, I'm very interested in wet paper and how colour. This was one I, a quick one um, that I copied from. I was in a cafe mm -hmm. and I tried to do the blending of the paints and this one really mucked up because I did the cactus then I added the people and the perspective is just totally wrong yeah. <laughs> so well, I learned a lot from that one <laughs> yeah yeah well um, but you're playing with color and it's got strong color so that's mm. beautiful and I like the Islamic dome it sort of tells mm. you where we are in the desert uh, I don't know if the cactus is meant to be huge it does look uh, gigantic what the other oh, cactus? No, well then I thought it could be surrealism, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because no, the cactus was meant not to be like that. Um, yeah, so I, this one, you know, I learned a lot from all the mistakes in it. I think, like, I couldn't work out how to color the dome so it looks more realistic, so I just left it. Yeah, you just um, drew, the, drew the outline to separate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and then so, I've got that cactus up here that's probably we too to, we have to think what are the what are so with watercolor you were mentioning about how some people will do a wash 
and then paint yeah. on top of it. So that's yeah. totally legit. But a lot of times with direct watercolor, you don't have time to let it dry. No. So you're thinking about what are the, I call it the three big shapes. So you have this, in this case, you have more than three, but let's just say there's the sky and the hills. They have a clear block of shapes, right? But mm -hmm. then I want that house. So then I have to think there's three things here and they can't all be wet at the same time. Mm -hmm. So which one do I leave? So I might leave, I might not touch anything inside the house. So it just stays white. And then I can paint the hill around that edge. So then I have a wet hill and a dry house. So the edge stays sharp. And then I might paint the horizon or like the sky in and try to bring it right up to the hills, you know, whatever, I'm painting along. But then when I come back to the house, then the hill has had time to dry. So you're doing this keep away game of when do I let my shapes touch? So because you went through the house, then of course you can never bring any light back, right? You can never go backwards in watercolor. So you have, there was really no way for you to draw the roof, uh, to make the curvature of the roof, except by making it darker still. Right. And so I see why you didn't want to do that. Um, so so that's the thing is thinking about the shape. So what you do have is a nice sharp edge on the mountains, which is great. And then so so that's like that's the negative shape I'm talking about. The third shape is like the cutout. So maybe you would even leave out the people, kind of just go around the people and, and leave them white and then come back later to put the people on top. Right. So it's the what order do I click all the little puzzle pieces together? Yeah. Yes, there's a but lot I mean, to learn. This is a lot of, uh, that's the theory, right? So that's, yeah. I'm talking about theories. I think, okay, yes. how, how do I divide into puzzles? And then you just do a lot of paintings and then you'll start to say, oh, I could have left that house. And then the fifth time you're like, okay, I could leave that house. And on the seventh painting, you actually do leave the house. Yes, <laughs> right. yes. So that's yeah. a, that's yeah. Oh, that's, the theory. yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you. I've learned so much in the last 30 days and I've yeah, enjoyed it. Just so thank you. Every day. That's really great. Uh, yes. Again, you were a teacher. So I, I love to have uh, We get all these extra people with these different backgrounds in the group mm. and we can all share our different learning styles. Uh, that's right. Really, really much more than we get in any of us do on our own. So, mm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you for sharing. So Uma, who's our, who's our, uh, Late joiner. I'm Susan. Um, I might be the late joiner that you're talking about. Great. She's going to uh, make you big. All right. I uh, I'll show um, oh. this one. It's like British Columbia. No, it's in near near Seattle. Well, uh, southeast of Seattle in a. Yeah. Uh, Creek near Pacific Northwest. Northwest. Yeah. Yeah. Pacific Northwest. And um, that one got a little overworked. This one was later when I decided let's just try fresher, quicker. What are the What is the colored shape in there? Give, bring us down. Bring that back. Bring that back. There's a red. The bright red. One. The red and the purple. It's what a is log, and I. I it's a log. These are like logs that are sort of intertwined. They've all fallen or amongst each other over yes, this. All that, all that dead wood. So and, it's very um, interesting. You put pure color on it. I yeah. I decided like this one felt a little overworked because I was struggling to understand these shapes. I see. Okay, so, so these are the same. Uh, it's the same, it's the same scene. Yeah, that's but very. I, did, I worked on it several versions. Okay, keep showing. The, over the course of two days, like here was the first one, which was again, a little bit thick, but at least I was understanding. Maybe this is the first. I did like five things that day or the two days. But this one, I, I kind of liked how I just said, oh, screw it. There's a little bit of orange on there. I'm going to exaggerate it. Yeah, so that one I think is the best. Yeah. If, I, if, I, if I'm entitled to I totally to tried to simplify it. And like, I got these, there's these moss co colored branches yeah. that it was just the, like a few brush strokes. I, you're the least it. constrained about reality on this one. Like you, yeah. you've worked it's through a, trying to get it correct. It's almost like a cartoon yeah. that it started to feel like, okay, just, just go for it. But I, but I like that one the best because the yeah. color. No, I, I, I agree. It has the most freshness. Yeah, and uh, so one thing that I find about watercolor is we, we often make these small paintings and I like to imagine if I was to take one of these and, and really blow it up in the studio and make a big oil painting, I would want to work from that third one. 
because where you put in this uh, more instinctual color, it's more exciting than the just plain reality. Yeah. Like, so that uh, you, it, it, uh, you put a little bit of abstractness into this already. Like, it's just a bunch of jumbled logs. It doesn't have to be real. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? You know, unless you're one of those nature painters that's trying to get, trying to paint all the moss and whatever. But I, I like it as a composition. Yeah. Yeah, I actually rearranged the logs a bit in, in, in some times. And um, my background was originally as an architect. And I think I had some something architectural with these. Uh, we did sort of like urban sketching way back at early days of architecture education. And I've also done figure drawing. And I always liked the gesture drawing a lot more than getting really detailed about the figure. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how I've heard of Uma, Kel Uma and Mark, how I've seen your stuff is looking at urban sketching things online. Yes, yeah, we definitely did that. Plenty of on that. social media. So that's how I heard about this 30 by 30. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think that... Uh, that uh, and it, just suits, it suits my mentality because I don't like to struggle over oil paintings that much. I get, I get bored. <laughs> Do you have anything else that was a highlight from your course? Oh, well, the other thing was um, I've been doing, I had to retire early and stuff, but um, I'm, I'm kind of horse obsessed. And so I did a lot of. Oh, these are very lively. I've been yeah. doing these yeah. for year decades. Ever since I got interested in horses again as an adult, I discovered that if I went to, I took my urban sketching basically to the horse show. Very good. And yeah. the very first time I did that, somebody could, I'm going to go in my pony next. Will you draw me and my daddy will buy it? <laughs> yes. So I've often been able to sell them right out of the sketchbook. Yes. So I, you will love it I, when you were, they were and there. And I just enjoy you. doing it. So sometimes <laughs> I sell them and sometimes. Can I see that first one again that had the four, three black horses? So this one really, you talked about gesture drawing. So I like the overlap of the forms, the way uh, you have one larger one to be the focal and the other supported. It really works as a piece. And the way you, the horse's tail is done in a single moving stroke, the smaller one. Uh, in fact, all of your parts of these horses are built out of these single strokes that you've assembled together to, to make the legs, right? So this is great calligraphic uh, brush drawing. I, I really love to see that. And the way you've had to leave out the saddles as a reserved white, really nice observation. I mean, this is what I love about direct watercolor that you can do the whole thing so quickly that you're doing it from life. That's really good. Uh, those are very nice. Yeah, really fresh. Yeah, I enjoyed you. Yeah, thanks for showing that, yeah. So Thank a lot of us have been to life drawing, but very few of us get to draw horses. So that's uh, <laughs> that's pretty neat. <laughs> so yes, thank you. Uh, that was really good to see, and uh, I hope you uh, you guys will all be um, sticking around. I mean, we go on hiatus and we don't officially do anything during the time after, but you're welcome to keep keep going and keep posting in the group uh, till next year. And if you've formed any, you know, teams where you're helping each other meet your deadlines, uh, I hope you'll keep up with that. Uh, you know, uh, just doing a weekly check-in or whatever, um, just to keep the group alive so that next year we're, we're, some of us are still around. That would be awesome. Yeah, I, uh, and I thank everybody. I want to thank everybody for helping me do 30 paintings because I'm always sort of tempted to just work. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for the group, I wouldn't take the month off to, to do the paintings. So thanks very much. That's fantastic. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, like uh, Mark said, you all were great supporters and you commented on other people's work and encouraged them. Just the two of us cannot encourage a lot of people. Mm -hmm. and. And just having two kinds of comments is not enough. You need to hear from other people's point of view. So without you, the community wouldn't have thrived. So I thank you for that. And yes. thank you for putting your best foot forward. When I say best foot, it means that even when your paintings were failing, you were still encouraging other people. And that's an amazing attitude to have. So thank you. Thank you, Uma. Thank you, Mark. This was really worth it. 
Yeah, very much. It's all about the community, for sure. The group activity. Hey, thanks, Mark and Uma. Yeah, it is a great experience Good. in this community. Yeah. I did love the shadows on your on your uh, moving van there. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that, it is a good yeah. So a lot of uh, fun. This is a fun basically, and uh, my family is also happy that I uh, have some different uh, paintings to show them. <laughs> Most of the <laughs> yes. time, they are just see okay the landscape and sky and other stuff, but it is they are happy now. Good. <laughs> yeah, what uh, Susan said about uh, when you draw people. They love it because they hardly ever get a chance to see an artist anymore. So when someone sees you draw them in person, uh, that's the only time I'll sell a drawing as well. I, we were just at the at the orchestra uh, drawing the orchestra um, practicing for a performance, and I sold three drawings right there. Uh, so your your family would probably love it if you start drawing them. <laughs> yeah, it is the same experience. Last uh, last to last week, I was with Campion Site. And I and there are a lot of RVs and stuff and tents. So I I painted two two pictures and one is uh, immediately sold out. That RV guy like that uh, there this one tent and RV. So this is my first uh, first ever uh, painting in my ten to fifteen years of practice. And now it is selling. So it is a good. <laughs> oh, very good. Congratulations. Yeah. Always a good, uh, always a good uh, affirmation that we're on. Yeah. So it, and 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 that too in our thirty by thirty challenge, uh, uh, this one event. But it's also, I, I'm glad some people have been talking about it like an exercise, because that, that's all this is is like it's like a project. Here's a set of rules to follow for a certain amount of time, and then uh, of course I hope you don't feel like we're judging you if you don't do it. You don't have to stick with these rules. You can go back to your other paints or continue drawing with pen and ink. Doesn't matter, right? So uh, I don't want to form a society where we're uh, policing everybody and catching people cheating. Like that's not what we. Don't <laughs> no, we don't want any of that? It's just an exercise to give us another tool in our toolkit. Because one day you'll find something where you only have ten minutes to paint it, and you'll be, I can do this, and you just. <laughs> get it down in one stroke. And it's good to have had that uh, trial by fire, right? So you don't have to have it, but one day you'll be like, thank God I'm also fast as well as precise, as well as the designer and all that. So, yeah. All Any right. final thoughts, Uma, for us? No, this was great. Uh, I look forward to seeing everybody in 2023. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Uma, that group is still working, right? The yes, group is still yes. active, so I yeah. can uh, have uh, till 12 o'clock like that, or it is not like so. Yeah, it's active, and uh, Damien also uh, adds throughout the year. Mark sometimes does, so. Go okay, on. no, it's not. Because I, I have to, uh, 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 what to call, upload some pictures. So sure. I thought, okay. Keep I'll... using the group. We just won't do anything official. Like, if we're there, we're there, but uh, yeah. it's not, nothing official. I agree. I agree. Good. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody.